I want to give a huge thank you to Chris Jones for sponsoring today's video. Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. My name is Frank Diorio. Today is the start of the Mega Death Star diorama project. And we're going to start with a simple build that you're going to be using a lot in uh, the multiple rooms. And that is the neon wall. But wait, it's not just a regular neon wall. Where is that switch? <laughs> it's hard to do with one hand. Oh, I'm turning it the wrong way. There we go. <laughs> God, all the climax, the excitement is all gone by now. So this is what we're building, the light up LED neon box. And so let's get to it. My name's Frank Durio. You know that already. You're watching Diorama Walk Workshop, dioramaworkshop.com. <laughs> Can you tell I haven't done this in a long time? First off, before we start, I want to give a huge thank you to all of you who've been watching and tuning in. I've received 500 new subscribers in one month since Christmas, which is a record for me. It took me six months just to get that same number last year. So that means that a lot of you are really excited about the Mega Death Star project as well. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And make sure to like the video and all of that good stuff because it really helps me out and encourages me to keep building, which I would still keep building even if you didn't do that, but I prefer that you do. So anyhow, make sure to do that. And also, before I forget, for the past 20 years when I've been doing, it's the, ever since the first uh, Star Wars Celebration diorama builders that I used to do, um, people have been always coming up to me and saying, oh, where can I get like a cool shirt like this one? Or mugs or different things like that. So I actually finally opened up a diorama workshop store. So you can check that out. I'll put the link in the description. You can buy all kinds of merchandise there, women's t-shirts, kids' t-shirts, men's t-shirts, mugs, baseball caps. I think that I pretty much given you as many options as uh, you can, including some of the really cool posters of some of my past dioramas as well. Now, the cool thing about this box over here is that it's so easy to make. It's using regular LED strips. At the time that I used to make dioramas 20 years ago when I started, I had to use mini miniature Christmas lights, which overheated, so you would have never been able to do something like this, so, which is a, a good advantage of waiting or procrastinating 20 years to get this done. Anyhow, what's amazing with this is that you can still use the basic decals without going LED, which would look like this, but using the LEDs really elevates it to another level, and I think that once you get into that, there's like no turning back. So. That's what we're going to do today. And then you'll be incorporating the same technique that we're doing for the wall number six, the wall number one, and wall number two of the next video, which is the Vader versus Kenobi Jedi dual room. So enough description, let's get to the material list. Okay, what we need in order to do our Death Star light up single neon wall is um, the blueprints, the decal, full-size uh, sheet for the skin, some tracing paper, a ruler, white foam core, a, some balsa wood, poster board in black, a X-Acto pen or X-Acto knife with refill blades, a pencil, pencil sharpener, hot glue gun, hot glue gun refills, glue stick, and LED strips. There's two things I forgot to mention in the materials. One is our traditional black Sharpie that we use to outline the decals. And the other one is a new Prismacolor uh, PC1067 cool gray to draw the lines on your Cricut decal. So in order to find your blueprints and decals and your Cricut SVG, you just go to my website, dioramaworkshop.com 
go to the Tutorials menu and scroll down to Speed Index. From there, you will scroll again until you get to Star Wars A New Hope, and then you will find the Mega Death Star Single LED Neon Wall, and then this first column here is Decals, and this is Blueprints. So click on Decals first, and this will bring you to the Decals page, and then you have a preview of what it looks like here, and then all you need to do is click on this little icon, and it'll bring you to the PDF. Download this to your computer and print. Then to go find the blueprint, all you need to do is go back to the Speed Index page. This time click on Blueprint, and this will bring you to the Blueprints page. Scroll down, this is a preview, and then this is to download. So click on that, it'll bring you the PDF page, and then you save that to your desktop and print. Now, for those of you who have crickets, and I assume that's why you're doing this, go to Tutorials menu again, and go to Cricut SVG, and then on this page, you scroll down until you find the build that you want to make, the Death Star single LED neon wall over here. So you click on this. This will bring you to the page. And then all you need to do is look at the previews or click on these SVG format links, style A and style B for the walls. You click on it and you will be downloading this in a zipped file and the same thing for here. And then once you have that done, you go to your downloads and you will find your two SVGs. Also, make sure to stay after the build because I'm gonna be giving you a sneak preview of all of the decals and blueprints for the next build, which is the Vader versus Kenobi Jedi Duel Room. Now, you may be wondering why you're printing a full-size color like this. It's because when you're doing regular Death Star walls, you have the color of the background panels and not necessarily black. And since we need to cut out using the Cricut on the poster board, we don't want to have the background of the neons black. We want it the same color. So that's why the first thing we're going to do is apply the full color sheets to the poster boards. And then that's what we're going to feed into the Cricut machine. First thing you want to do is make sure you have a clean surface, remove all your cat hairs if you have cats. <laughs> and then I'm going to take one sheet and I'm going to peel it. And then I'm going to carefully apply it. it. You don't have to have it perfectly aligned because you're going to be cutting the excess out. With the ruler, start at the bottom, lift this up, move center out, center out, center out center out as you let this get lower and lower so that you don't have any bubbles or creases in your paper. You have a flat, flat surface. Since I'm making multiple neon boxes, I'm going to be using several of these sheets. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my X-Acto and you could use scissors if you wanted to. I'm going to trim along the white edges to recreate my eight and a half by 11 sheets on my poster board here. It's always best to use a cork ruler. This way it doesn't move when you put pressure on it. Trim that off. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna be placing this on a Cricut mat anyhow. So I have one clean sheet and instead of black, we have the actual color of the Death Star wall. I almost was aligning with the color instead of the white. And there we go, I have all my sheets ready. Now I'm gonna use just one for now. The others you can put away for future projects. I'm now grabbing my Cricut mat. I'm gonna remove this protector. So this you wanna align properly. So I'm gonna make sure that it aligns in the corner and it reaches just to 11, a little bit after 11. So I push down hard here so that this surface of the poster board is not going to move around when you start cutting your neon holes. Okay, I've loaded my templates over here in the Cricut Maker. I'm going to click here on Make It. Now it loaded my graphics onto my mat. 
And if I show you closer, we could see that the four shapes here fit at 10 inches. So we have plenty of room for the 11 inches and it goes to six, which is good. Continue. Now it's asking me to select what material I'm using. I'm using poster board. So I'm gonna click on that to load my mat in the Cricut machine. I just have to place it in between these two little guides there. And then I just slightly press it against the wheels and then I hit this. And now it's aligning. Now it's telling me I'm ready to hit start. Now it does one little row at a time until all the neons will be done. You can see there the neons that it started to cut there. Just a little bit more and we're done. Now it's cutting along the rectangles so that we have a perfect match for 15 centimeter by six centimeter. And we are done. Our little light is flashing that we can eject it. And our pattern is cut. Now all we have to do is remove it from the mat. I have my little picky tool here that comes with the Cricut machine and I'll be able to lift this in the corner and see how all the cutting comes apart really easily. Now this we don't need, I'm gonna throw that away. So I wanna remove each of these four panels. So I'm gonna start in the corner here and go down like this. When I start pulling on this, the inside of the neons will remain on the mat. So we have a perfect cutout for the neon, which will allow us to have the LED shine through. Now let me remove the other ones. Now it becomes very fragile because you removed all those little neon panels. So you're having all these little holes on your sheet. So we have four panels over here that we can use to make four individual boxes. All these inside pieces is just scrap. Use the tool to just peel them off. And then we just put that in the garbage. Now, when you removed all the inner neon pieces from your mat, you can apply another sheet, you can make another cut, or you can put this away and start building your box. Now on my Cricut, I cut four pieces over here because it fit on a page, but we're only gonna need one piece in order to create one light box. Put these aside for now. The first thing you're gonna notice that we have to do is that we have holes where the neons are, which when you do a regular print on your decal sheets, the white is created by the decal skin. So we need to hide the back of these holes so that you don't see the actual LED strips or the light shine through. And how we do that is using tracing paper. So I'll just pull a sheet out here. Both sides are pretty much identical, so it doesn't matter what side you use. Just make sure that it's flat and clean and that there's no folds or creases in this. You want it to be pristine. Now what we're gonna do is apply some glue stick on the black side and then place it onto the tracing paper and that'll give us the white insides that you see on the regular decal. Now don't worry that it doesn't look as bright as you see here because once the lights are turned on, you'll get this exact effect. Take a piece of scrap paper, and then you just want to apply a coat of glue stick. Never ever use hot glue. You're gonna dry too fast. It's gonna make creases and bumps in your tracing paper. Make sure to get it in all the corners because you don't want any of this to peel off on the sides there. Don't put it too thick so that you'll have excess on the insides of the neon cutouts there. Okay, now carefully turn it around and apply it on your sheet. Press down slowly at first, then you can move it like this. It's gonna want to start curving a little because the wetness of the glue onto the cardboard. And then make sure to press on the sides. You don't want any looseness here and especially where the neons touch. Good, 
let this dry for a minute or two and then we'll cut out the excess. Now, because I didn't want to just waste a whole tracing paper, I added a second one of the decals so that I could cut it out and put it away until I use it later. Now that the glue has pretty much dried, I'm just going to cut at the sides. There, we have one piece now. I'm going to put this aside since I have a second piece to cut. Make sure you're using a new blade when you're doing this because you don't want to have a dull blade that's going to tear your tracing paper because this is very fragile or fragile as we say in French. I have two. I'm going to keep one for now. As you see the back, you have some creasing from the glue, but once the light shines through, you shouldn't be seeing it on the front side. You could see it more closely resembles the decal now by using the tracing paper as a background to the cutouts. If you've seen many of my past videos, you know my Sharpie technique by now. What I want to do is eliminate the whiteness on the edges by using the side of my Sharpie and just by coloring the edges like this. This will make a nice cleaner connection between your two wall panels. Do you see the difference between the black and the white edges? Make sure you're always using the color side pointing away from your Sharpie. Okay, so I have a black edge over here so that if whatever is exposed, you won't see a white line. Now, if we look at the light up single neon wall blueprint, you're going to see that we need to cut out in white foam core, a 15 by six centimeter wide panel. You're gonna cut for the sides 15 centimeters by two centimeters, and then five centimeters by two centimeters for the bottom. But these, you're gonna have to cut in balsa wood as opposed to foam core. Now, the reason that we can't use foam core for the top and bottom is because the thickness that we have over here is the same thickness 0.5 centimeters as an actual foam core. So if you were going to align it in the back like this, it would overlap onto the neons and then it would create one, a shadow, and two would prevent you to have the proper space to put your LED strip. By using two millimeter thick balsa wood, you can easily cut this with your X-Acto knife as well the thickness will only go two millimeters instead of five. So this will allow you extra room at the bottom so that your light will light up properly. Two centimeters by five. So here's two and then two at the top. Draw a connecting line. Align this five centimeters and then another five. Do the same thing at the top. Five and then at 10. Okay, so I want to cut this and this. Always metal ruler with a cork at the bottom. Now you're going to want to press hard because you're going to have to do multiple passes, even with a new blade. Try not to angle your blade like this. You want to have it as much at 90 degrees to the floor as possible. There we go. I think this is almost cut through. Okay, I'll put this aside for later. Trim this. Come on. There we go. That's the hardest part, believe it or not. So now I'm going to take my white piece of foam core, 15 over here, and then 15 at the top. Now I need to cut one times six and two times two. Six, two, and two. And then at the top, you do the same thing. Six, two, and two. Connect those. Trim along here first so I can reuse the other piece later. When you cut the foam core, this is where it's important for you to keep the blade 90 degrees. You don't want to tilt the blade sideways because then you'll get an angle cut. Believe it or not, this is all you need. Your front wall that you created in your Cricut should match the dimensions of your rear wall. Okay, when you look at your blueprint over here, you'll see that on the top view, you have your rear wall here with the sides attached to the surface of your rear. And then the decal that we created in the Cricut goes on top of these sides like this. And then your balsa wood fits in between like this at the top and the bottom. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the hot glue gun 
and we're going to put some hot glue over here and then stick it on the side of the rear wall over here. Apply some hot glue to the side, align it bottom with the edge. You want it to be flush over here and at the top. And make sure that this is 90 degrees. You don't want it angled. If you have a little excess glue on the sides, you can wipe them away to get a clean effect. So we have one piece like this. I'm gonna do the other side. Put your hot glue, align with the outside, the top and the bottom. Now it's especially important that you have it flush here and you have it flush on the other side. When you align your box to regular walls, you want them to be the same height. You don't want it to be shorter or taller. Remove any excess. Now we're going to make sure that our little piece over here fits perfectly. A little bit of hot glue on the sides along the bottom and the other side. Lift it up like this first, align it and press it against the wall and then you can bring them together. Make sure that you have it flat. I'm going to remove this excess. So we have one base like this, flush like that. Now the reason that we can use foam core on the side as opposed to the balsa is that you have more gaps here than you do at the bottom. So you could see that the thickness doesn't overlap on the neon sides over here, which would create shadows. Now we can glue this top piece, make sure that it fits properly. A little bit of glue on the sides, the top and the other side. I'll insert it like this first and then press it down. Align it flush with the back, remove any excess. It doesn't really matter which side is up or down because it's identical. What's gonna matter is once you decide which one is the top, that's where you're gonna be cutting your little slit over here in order to pass your LEDs. Now for your LED strip, it's gonna be very simple. You're gonna be following the edges of your box. You'll notice that the LEDs is very thin. It's almost thin like scotch tape. So all you need to do is draw a little line, double thickness of Sharpie like this, and then cut that out. Pushing your cut against this will prevent it from tearing. One pass over here, and then stop before you get to the bottom there, and then another pass there. And then I can just do a little slit removal over here. And then I should be able to just pull this out. And that gives you your gap to pass your LED strip. When you go to cut your LED strips, you cut where the little scissor marks are, not in between the other sections, because this little marking will give you copper contacts. Well, I think it's copper in between the two sides, and then it'll allow you to reconnect it using these splicing wires. Since this is my first box, I'm gonna need a power supply, so I'll keep this to start but I still want to find where the scissor marking is, and that's where I'll be placing it on the outside, like this. With your Sharpie pen, put a marking so that you know where the start is, and then I'm gonna be pressing against the box with the strip just to find the exact measurement that I need. I'll just find a connector, and here is where I can cut it. Put this aside. For a future box, you'll notice that your LED strip is not the thickness of the entire side. So you can place it anywhere you want, but not really, because if you put the LEDs at the top, close to the front, then the light will shine too much and you might be able to see where the spots are of all your spacing between your LED strip. So what you want to do is you want to align it towards the base, the bottom, so that the reflection will be diffused and then doubly diffused through the tracing paper and you won't see any light source. You'll You'll just see an even glow all the way around. I'm just trying to peel back this wax paper thing here. Now I'll tear that. You want to apply it at the bottom, not at the top. So peel back and just align this. See how it goes at the bottom like that. Just press it in. Try to get the corner as round as you can. Peel a bit more, pass it through the exit. 
and then whatever excess I have, I'll just put it back with the tape and then I'll just tear it over here so that the connecting parts don't have any sticky goop on them. Now I have my LED going all the way around my box. I'm ready to put the lid on. You're gonna put some drops of hot glue on the sides and over here, and then you're just going to align this box like this. You can also color the edges over here black so that there won't be any seams if any of this shows through when you connect it to the boxes. So just a little bit of black. It's not really necessary. Black is better than white for peekaboo. If you put too much glue, you might have glue fall onto your LED and then damage it. So just slight little drops. That's all you need all the way around. Carefully take this, align it to the sides because you want it to be flush. And then you want it to be flush at the top and bottom as well. Try not to press in the center because you don't want it to bend in. Then just let this dry for two, three minutes. And you now have a shape that matches pretty well to your original decal. Here's where we see if the magic works. Are we ready? And it does. So you see, you have it just as bright, if not more, than your decal sheet. Now, when you're going to be placing this inside the diorama, the light will reflect on the glossy, high gloss black vinyl, and it's going to look exactly like in the movie. Now, you can make as many of these as you want to place all along the walls of your diorama, and it'll elevate it to a new level. There's one step that I forgot to do. You see these lines that go across? You have to take your Prismacolor color pencil and then just mark over here like so. Don't press too hard. Draw a straight line across. Now your decal has the sectionals over here that are not in the step that I forgot to do. Here you can see the difference between having the lines and not having the lines. Now when you place your neon front on top, you see that the lines match up. So there you have it. It's pretty easy and it's something that you're going to be using a lot. Now, if you don't want to go the light up route, you can use the basic decals like uh, we said. And if not, then uh, I hope that you will follow my example and go with the LEDs. It's so much cooler and it's going to make your Death Star diorama look even more amazing when your friends come visit. Okay, so I promised you a sneak peek at the decals and the blueprints for the Vader versus Kenobi duel. Now, the decals PDF will have 22 full pages for all the skins that you're going to need in that room. The blueprint contains 20 diorama blueprints to help you build that room. So let's get to it. So in the decal PDF, you're going to have 22 pages, like I mentioned. The first page is your main room wall one. So this is on the left side of the main room where Kenobi and uh, Vader are fighting. Page two is the same thing, but mirrored. Page three is the start of the arch. So this is the arch that goes into the curved hallway over here. And then this is your wall seven. Then you have wall nine, wall three, which is the other half of your section over here of the arch. And then you have wall four and five. You have these, which are in three pieces because they're so big. This is the rear background of the docking bay section. These go side by side to continue the pattern. Now, if you don't want to do all the detail of this box, you'll have something that looks at least clean, but this will be a three-dimensional build that we will be placing over it. And then this is the right side of that. And then this is the top part of the pipe shaft, which is this part that we see over here. So the top lip that goes over here is from this skin decal. Then we have wall number eight. We have wall number six, which is also a wall that will be built in LED box the way that we just saw uh, today. However, it's three in a row. So the, the strips will be going around this way. I'll explain more when we come to build that. Then we have the blast door left, blast door right. This is beside 
The blast doors where Darth Vader and Obi-Wan are fighting, this is to give you the impression that you're inside the docking bay. This is your actual pipe, sh pipe, sh <laughs> pipe shaft, right, that uh, will be the front of the 3D uh, element, and this will be cut out. Actually, you'll have the option to leave it like this if you don't want to do the extra work, but I'll show you the, that after. Then you have the blast door end caps that go left and right over here. And here's the pipe shafts that I, my God, I'm having trouble with that word, pipe shaft. -a. And so this you'll be cutting out like the blast doors and then you'll be using actual real straws to put behind here to give you the pipes and the look of the movie. So this is if you don't want to do that, and then this you'll be using if you want to go full out like I'm going to be building. This is the new blast doors, but it's actually the rear blast door, and uh, this is where you put it on the inside of the Kenobi Vader room. And then at the end of the corridor is a wall D fake door. These are your ceiling skins, which will be going in between your pieces here your light beams, this is the light cutouts that you're gonna have. What's in white is what the LED will shine through. And then these are the skins that you put so that the ceiling matches the same color as the walls and not just have a black ceiling which would break the illusion of the movie set. This is more of the skins, skin C, B and A. This is E and F. And then this is all of the little ceiling end caps that go on the ends. Then you have these, which are the main room, A and B, right? Ceiling beams. And then the same thing here, ceiling beams C and D. And then you have ceiling beam E with the ceiling beams left sides over here. And that's the decals. As for the blueprints, you have 20 pages, and this is what took me the longest time to do because as you will see, I had all these little illustration versions to make you understand better how all of this works. So on page one, you have all of the dimensions for your foam core shapes. So you're gonna cut all of these out and then you'll be applying the decal skins to these pieces afterwards. So this is the shapes for all of the walls, page one. These are all of the shapes that you're gonna need to cut out on page two. Page three shows you actual support sides if you're gonna make some stacking on your diorama. If you don't need to stack it and it's just on the shelf, you won't necessarily need to add these. And then this is your floor base. You see the actual shape of the room in transparency here to see how it fits on your floor base over here. Next up is the actual placement of all of the pieces. And this is a top view that you can see like this, and better understand. This is your docking bay over here, your right and left docking bay walls. This is the docking bay area where the stormtroopers would be. And then in here is where Darth Vader and Ben Kenobi fight. These are your LED light boxes along with this wall over here. This I'm going to be doing in a deluxe light up. You can use just stickers and not have to build these if you want. There's an arch over here on wall three, which opens up to this curve over here. So the curve hallway is walls four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then the door that we have over here. After that, here is the side view of the blast door that I did to try to explain to you how all of the different layers work because the blast door is what separates the room inside and the docking bay outside. So the blast doors have 11 sections of foam core to create the thickness. And then on top of that is where you will have the docking bay. Now this you can do the height that you want. If you want it tall, you can. I just did it this height because I think it looks good and it's the height of uh, two panels. Then over here is gonna be your pipe shaft elements there that I was telling you with the straws and all that. That's gonna be over this section of the blast doors. And then the front 
is what you see in the movie with the two skins on each side and then you'll have the pipes like this on the top and then the docking bay recessed over here so this will be what you look at from the front view and this is what you look at from the rear view next page is three-quarter view so these are the kind of graphics that were taking me a long time to do but i thought a good necessary step for you to understand how everything is made so this shows you exactly how your pieces should all fit together wall number one two three the arch four five six neon seven corner eight nine ten and then next page explains the ceiling pieces now you're going to have templates where because of the size of the ceiling and the angles and all the different things it was complicated to just give you measurements so you're going to be attaching two pieces of blueprint together and you're going to be creating this template that you'll trace onto your foam core to give you the exact ceiling. Now this is what the, the curved hallway looks like with this ceiling piece in place. And then this is your main ceiling that goes on top of the front part of the room over here where they're fighting. So this is what this looks like and then this piece would go behind it over here like that. Moving on, here is your light box ceiling. The same technique that we used for the basic hallways A, B, and C. I'll be explaining how that works. And then you have your floor. So your foam core floor is one level. The height of these over here. And then with the height of the three centimeter box. And so this is what your diorama looks like when you're going to be finished building the rooms. And then when you place your blast door and docking bay wall in front of this, then this is the view that you're going to get in the final diorama. The floor will extend over here there where you could place the stormtroopers running and different things like that. And then you have Vader and Ben Kenobi here. You could even put his cloak after Vader. Vader slices him and makes him disappear and all that. All the possibilities that you have in this iconic battle there. So page 9 and 10 are the templates I was telling you about. So all you'll have to do is cut out and then align the A and X that you see here with this paper. And so once it's placed like this, it'll give you the exact measurements to do your ceiling. Now, here is all of the information that you're going to be needing when we're going to be doing the LED structure for the light up curves. All of these pieces, measurements over here, are all of the frames that you're going to be placing around the top over here, which is the two centimeter high ones like we did for the sides of the LED box. And so you're going to be adding these spines over here because you're going to be using that to wrap the LEDs that you're going to see in the next page. And then you're going to be using this black ceiling part that you cut out and you're going to be taking this shape, retracing it in order to place it on top of each other. Now this page 12 explains to you how you're going to be inserting all of the LED strips to light this curve. Over here you have, like we did in the light box that we just did, you have the top over here, which is a white foam core for the ceiling. Here you have the black foam core for the bottom, and then you'll have the sides. What you're gonna be doing is that the power supply is gonna enter over here, and your LED strips are gonna follow along these supports, go along here, go along this way and snake its way. And then we'll be exiting where we started in the same manner as the LED box that we just made tonight. Now this will allow you to have maximum equal lighting on both sides of your white section. Now in this one, your LED is going to exit the curved wall and enter this three neon panel. And once it curves all the way around, it's gonna re-exit this wall box over here and then continue its way over here. Now, if you're not using the LED and just using a plain sticker, then you can just follow this pattern over here. Page 14 shows you the alignment of the LED boxes and how the walls line up just with the outsides of the white cuts that you created in your ceiling. And what this does is because of the thickness, it allows the white to extrude a little bit past the thickness of the foam core and it makes it look like your beams over here are actually sitting on top of the light surfaces. That's how the movie set is constructed. Now we go to page 15 
And we have the main room light box. So this will be the top for the bounce reflection. Here's gonna be your dimensions where you do the cutting. So you're gonna place your tracing paper on top of here. And then you're gonna be using these cut measurements over here for your spines and your light supports and your frame over there. Moving on to 16 is how your LED strips will be working on here. So the same principle, exit, or enter, <laughs> exit, exit, enter, enter first, enter in one corner, wrap around, go around the spines, allowing you to have equal light on both sides of your cutout shape over here, and then exiting at the same space that you had your entrance. And then you'll be able to connect this to your curved ceiling over here. Next is this, the, the. Next is the example, if you decide to put like me, the LED box left and LED box right, instead of plain stickers, like we saw in the curved one, when you come in, you're gonna be exiting the main roof to light up this section of the neons, and then you'll be exiting, going into this side of the LED box, and then re-exiting into the main room, and then you'll be curving around like you did before in the version that you don't have these, and then you exit, and then you're ready to attach this to the curved and create a full connection with the lighting system. Page 18 shows you the alignment for the walls with your ceiling. Same thing as the curved where your walls align with the outsides of your white cuts so that the foam core overlaps by 0.5 centimeters into the white zone, creating a 3D emboss effect uh, just like you see in the movie. Now, this is similar to what we did tonight, and this is uh, basically the construction for walls one and two, because in the center of the wall, if I take the decal, we're gonna be replacing this flat decal with light up boxes. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be printing with the Cricut, cutting out these neon holes on this shape, and then you're gonna attach only the left and right part of the decal onto your box over here. And so then it'll create the full wall effect, but with the lights turning on and off. Here's all your measurements that you're gonna need for your home course sides. What you're gonna be doing is the same principle as the single single neon, but with a spine in the center. So your strip will be going inside the box and instead of coming right back out because it's a double, you'll be going around this spine and then coming out this way. And then you'll be able to connect, splice it with any of the other LED strips nearby. And then for the wall number six, which is the last of the pages, is the triple neons over here. This is the same principle, except you have three boxes over here with two spines creating the three zones. Here you have the foam core dimensions that you have to cut. And your LED this time is gonna go in and around, around the spine, back to the top, and then out. And that's the end of that. I hope that uh, you're gonna try it out. And uh, when we get into the other rooms, I'm going full LED strip for everything from the chasm to the Vader duel, which is up next to uh, the conference room. Every single thing that has lights, I'm gonna try to do light up so that when you enter the room, or when friends enter or whoever, when I show it on video after everything is built, you'll get a real, bigger wow factor seeing everything light up like a Christmas tree. That's the idea. So that's it for now. Frank Diorio, ciao. Thanks for watching Diorama Workshop. If you want to see the entire list of currently available Diorama build blueprints, decals, and tutorials, visit my website's Speed Index menu page. If you want to interact with me, you can find and follow me on these social media platforms. If you have a question about this video or any past Star Wars Celebration Diorama booth builds, send me an email at dioramaworkshop.com at gmail.com. If you enjoyed this video, you now have access to the Super Thanks button, which allows you to send a one-time donation that helps support Diorama Workshop future builds and tutorials. If you want to encourage my website and channel long-term, you can now become a patron. Your support will help purchasing more materials for future builds and tutorials. Visit Patreon Diorama Workshop for more information. 
If you are interested in Diorama Workshop collectibles, you can now purchase all kinds of cool merch in the Diorama Workshop Spread Shop store. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends and social media groups to check it out. You can see more about this build and two decades of Star Wars Celebration construction. Simply click on the link to warp to dioramaworkshop.com, the official Star Wars Celebration Diorama Builders booth website.